we traveled with our four-year-old over a 14-hour road trip from Chicago to Destin, Florida during a pandemic, and it was great. <laughs> but it did take some planning and prepping ahead of time to make it as smooth as possible. And one of the ways we did that was through some fun road trip activities. So if you wanna see what we did on our road trip, then keep on watching. What's up universe, it's Julie and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about some mom stuff that I hope is helpful about what we did with our four-year-old to occupy him on our road trip when we went to Dustin, Florida. Now keep this in mind that some of these tips work for us because we do have a four-year-old so the tips will be catered towards that age range. So these are just things that worked for us and I found to be helpful so I thought it would be nice to share with you. In case you didn't watch our last video, Go back and watch that. That's all about our Florida vacay and see some of the food that we ate on our road trip. Okay, so first thing is that we rented a minivan, which ended up being the best decision ever. Because first of all, we didn't think our old car could make it, you know, the road trip there and back. And good thing we decided to do this actually, because side note, the day before we left for Florida, that old car actually broke down. It just like kaput broke down. We had to just leave it broken down and worry about it when we got back. So that was a good decision on our part to rent a minivan. We needed more leg room, more space for our luggage, and we wanted it to have like quick access in and out of rest stops. And because the minivan was like new for Lincoln, he had fun just staring out the large windows on the sides. And so in the beginning of our trip, we tried to take away as much of screen time as possible because we wanted him to be kind of just enjoying the scenery, the sights, and then we were just talking, entertaining, having fun conversations in the car. And eventually I shifted over to like giving him little fun things to play with, like his sunglasses. And he played with them for a while. I gave him his sunglasses in his case. He's busy like playing with that, putting them on his head, taking them on and off. Our matey. Our matey. <laughs> yeah. I also made sure that he was there with his favorite little stuffy. He calls him puppy very creative name and he also had something interesting it's a weighted lap pillow so it has like the little weighted beads on it got it from target and you just put it on your lap and it helps the kid to calm down not be nervous to settle in so put that on him and i think that helped kind of just give him like a, a peaceful environment can you show youtube your weighted pillow yeah Shortly after, I decided to FaceTime the grandparents, which were my parents who live in Philadelphia on the East Coast. And uh, I think I forgot to mention to them that we were headed over to Florida. So I decided to just give them a call on FaceTime. They're like, what, where are you going? Um, we're going for vacation. Ah, uh, vacation. Yeah. Okay, Yeah. Same Uh-huh. <laughs> so we were just talking to them in Korean and Lincoln was just kind of listening to them, seeing their faces. So that was kind of a nice thing. So if you want to do something to break things up, then you can always FaceTime someone and just have, you know, the whole family talk to them too, like a relative, a friend. And then I started to dig through my Mary Poppins bag. So this is a bag that I kind of found last minute on sale at Walmart and I thought it was cute, but it was the perfect like duffel size to put all my knickknacks. I got this tip from like other bloggers and other YouTube videos about saying like maybe have one bag at your feet where you have like knickknacks. So it could be like little toys you haven't played with in a while or activity sets or even toys that you wrap up so that when they open it, it seems like special, like a gift. And honestly, these toys could be little trinkets from the Target dollar section, little dollar items from the Dollar Tree, or it could be stuff that you already had. For me, it was stuff that I already had. I had it stowed away in like other bins. I just never gave it to him. So I had some of that stuff backed up too. Other things that I like using are like Melissa and Doug products, like Water Wow, or these reusable sticker pads. And I can leave a link for you down below for those things. Melissa and Doug has like great stuff when it comes to road trip activities. I had probably self-admittedly had too much stuff in the bag 
but I don't know, I always overpack anyway. <laughs> so I had a mix of like puzzles, artsy stuff like, you know, dot markers and like those dot coloring pages. And Lincoln likes traveling with his toy cars. So I had like a, some toy cars and monster trucks and stuff like that in there too. And before we left, I did some research on podcasts, like podcasts for kids. It's kind of nice to listen to something that's besides music. And it's like something fun to do that doesn't involve screen time, but it helps them to kind of be occupied by listening either to a story or like some fun facts. So I stumbled across this one called But Why, and it's for like curious kids. Anyway, I guess you could say she's a dog scientist and she's here to answer your dog questions. And it is pretty age appropriate. It's kind of cute because sometimes in the segment, they'll have like actual kids calling in and asking questions. And it was fun. It kind of lasted us probably like a good hour or so of just him staring out into space and listening to the podcasts. Other podcasts that we kind of listen to that you might be interested in is Circle Round. That's like storytelling and there's wow in the world. And that's more also for like answering questions about the world. And there's different ones. There's like story pirates. Any of those are kind of interesting. Do you want to continue listening to the thing or do you want to take a break from listening to the thing? Continue listening to it? Okay. And then we had lunch in the car. And that's another tip that I have learned. You can kill a lot of time by eating in the car. And actually it's recommended for traveling with kids because by the time you stop at rest stops to actually eat, whether you go inside or take it to go or whatever, it takes up a lot of time to do that. By the time you figure out what everyone wants to eat, like if they've been sitting in a car for X amount of hours, they probably don't wanna sit again quietly and calmly in a restaurant and eat. So what I saw and learned in other blogs is that you wanna use movement breaks. We couldn't find places like that and I wasn't very like intentional about looking it up. When we did stop, we did stop at a gas station and it wasn't like very fun. There's tips about stopping intentionally at places where it's kind of fun for them, whether it's the playground or even inside of like a supermarket, a Walmart, a Target, because you can use the bathroom inside and then you can just meander through the aisles and just kind of be inspired. And if the kid is good, you can get them a nice special snack or a little trinket or a toy, maybe even from the dollar section. But we stopped by the gas station first because that's what we came upon. We needed the gas. We did the bathroom breaks. And then while Joe was getting the gas, Lincoln and I went through this grassy field nearby. And luckily there was actually these weird boats sticking up in the middle of the grass, which was kind of fun and interesting. And I made him run around like up and down the hills. And I actually ran too because I needed exercise as well. We had a lot of time to move around. We were like playing with rocks, jumping up and down, going all over the place. So he had a lot of movement. And by the time they get all that energy out, they're ready to sit down again for an extended period of time. Another tip is that if your child naps, at a certain time to kind of like instill that even when you're driving on the road. It'll kill a lot of time because you don't have to worry about them because they'll be sleeping. But we brought his little fuzzy pillow that he sleeps with, gave that to him as like a cue and hoped that he would fall asleep. He ended up not sleeping. We finally pulled out some screen time because he requested watching something. So we ended up bringing a DVD player, like a portable one. And like, I would have never even had that. My dad gave that to me for some reason a long time ago, never opened it, it was just kind of there. And then we decided to pull it out for the trip because on his iPad, we don't have a lot of storage space to download stuff and we don't have data. So I brought the DVD player and went to the library the day before with Lincoln and we picked out a bunch of DVDs that would be fun to watch. Anything that was from educational to fun. And so I selected a whole bunch cause like in our library, you can just take as like many as you want. And like the due date is like so far away. Another tip that might be helpful is that Joe, knowing that we would have the DVD player, didn't want to have to rely on charging it or it being, you know, running on batteries. So he ended up buying this kind of like converter thing that like for it fits into the car, but that you can plug actual real plugs into it as well as USB cords. And that was really helpful because we just plugged the DVD player in there the whole time and the cord was long enough to reach. So we just kept it plugged the whole time. We didn't have to rely on batteries. We didn't really stop again. We did stop by for a Starbucks for a pick me up, but we didn't like get out of the car. Um, and then we did stop for a second time since the gas station at a Walmart. And that's when we took our own tip, which was to go to somewhere that would be kind of fun for him. And like, we saw that he was being so good during the trip. So we wanted to reward him. And he was like in the toy section looking around. That was fun for him. And then he wanted this like, you know, we were gonna get him this like four pack or five pack of cars 
but instead we he didn't want the four pack it's like four dollars right so we decided we decided to let him pick out four individual regular hot wheels and then that's a mistake because we probably should have just let him get one he doesn't know any different right so we probably should have just let him get one per Walmart stop on the way there and on the way back and would have seemed more special because whenever we stopped at Walmart the next times, we didn't let him get anything. So I guess if you're gonna get your kid something, maybe get them like one little small thing and then get them one little small thing at every stop, whether it's a little special treat or a snack or a dollar Hot Wheel. We got to our hotel in Nashville and then we actually started to worry about like his sleeping situation because we weren't sure if he would be able to handle um, a regular grown-up bed because he doesn't sleep in one at home. He uses a toddler bed low to the ground. We decided to try out putting him in his own queen bed, but we did invest in these inflatable bumpers, which worked out fabulously. Like I wasn't sure, I read some reviews and they worked out so great. They're super compact and then you just blow them up and it comes with like a little foot pump that's easy to do. It's easy to deflate, it's easy to inflate and you sneak them under the tight fitting sheets and they stay in place. Granted, you could probably use like pillows from the hotel or rolled up clothes, but these were like perfect. They didn't budge. They were the right size, the right length, but they were really successful. Lincoln was able to sleep in a big boy bed and we used the pillow to block off the bottom half. Um, and then the bumpers were really good. Did you feel comfortable in the bed, Lincoln? Okay, that's good. And if you're interested in it, we'll leave a link for you down below in the description box so you can snag it for yourself too, because this was very helpful. The next day when we hit the road, I sat in the back with him this time, and I pulled out my Mary Poppins bag. In there, I had Play-Doh and these little Play-Doh sets. Like, you know how sometimes they sell these construction sets or car sets that come with Play-Doh? I put it away for a while, and I pulled it out just for this trip, so it seems fresh and new. Play with Play-Doh? Like that, yeah. The Play-Doh is new though, so we gotta open the package too. Yeah. That orange and blue. And then those are your little car pieces. So you can make little cars. Yeah. And he was playing with that for a long while. Like I don't know if it was over like 45 minutes or something. And another thing I forgot to mention is those trays. The tray that you see, he uses that all the time. We've bought that like so long ago, but we've been using it for now years and it's been working out great. We'll also leave a link for that tray down below or something similar if I can't find it. But it's great because it has that ledge and it's soft. You can even have a strap that ties around the kids so that it doesn't slip off. But the ledge is good because then like little hot wheels don't roll off, little crayons. There's like little dividers to put like juice boxes or snacks. It was perfect. And if you ever needed to use it to like color, this is definitely worth the investment. Eventually we killed time by him eating lunch in the car again. It was a bento box that I made. I talked about it in our previous video. He ate some more snacks, um, listening to music, and then there were times we weren't listening to anything at all. So we tried to divide it up with times that we're listening to music, listening to podcasts, talking, and then no noise at all, just kind of like quiet. And I think kind of like breaking it up like that helps the time go by faster. Of course, once we get to Florida, he's like so happy. He's just playing with his sand toys, which we brought from home, playing with his monster trucks. So the toys that I brought with me, I tried to see like, can he play with it in the car, in the hotel room, in the sand. And for him, it's all about cars, like Hot Wheels, trains, and monster trucks. So I just brought things like that. So it was his birthday right before we left, like literally like two days before we left. His grandparents called and said on our Florida trip to buy him something on their behalf. We ended up going to Target and he ended up picking these cars from the Cars movie. So he really enjoyed it. And so because they were fresh and new on our road trip back home, he was just playing with those for a while on his little travel tray. He was playing with them for like a long while, just with nothing else. Eventually I went through my Mary Poppins bag and pulled out this thing called Lego Racers, which our friend Karen gave to us as a hand-me-down. And it's like, fits in a Ziploc bag all flat. They're these foam pieces. And then you can fashion them together to make ramps, make a ramp with like a flame coming out of it. And so I pulled out his monster trucks and he was playing with that. He was playing with that with his cars, character cars. Lincoln switched over to his monster trucks and here's his little ramp with foam pieces. There's flames and barrels and cones and tires. Help! I have to get down from the fire! 
And then once he got tired of that, I ended up pulling out yet something else, just adding to it to give him imaginative play. So there's these blocks called tegu. They're these magnetic blocks. And they come this small little pack in a pouch. And he's played with them before. I have quiet time at home and he likes to play with them at home so he knows how to use them. But I thought it was great because they're magnetic so they're less likely to fall off his tray, create a mess, be frustrating. And they were, he was so busy stacking them together, clicking them together, making little ramps and obstacle courses for his cars. Wait, can you show the camera how they stick together? Oh, there you go. They just stick together like this. Yeah. Can I get past it? Oh, me. <laughs> I believe we did like maybe another stop home. We're back at another Walmart, taking another movement break. We, I think we kept stopping by Walmart, but that was the last time. We didn't buy him any more Hot Wheels cars or anything. And on the last stretch all the way home, he pretty much watched a lot more DVD. He watched his iPad um, here and there, but again, we only had downloaded some things on there. At one point, I did pull out something fresh and fun for him. So I did pull out one of his wrapped presents, which was something that I already had before. Lincoln watched a lot of iPads, so we're gonna take a break and we're gonna do this while we still have some sunlight. Here, open that up. It was a puzzle of like animal faces and bodies that I got from the Target dollar section. I think it was $3. I had this for a while now. And they're these like wooden little pieces which are tactile and fun, and you can switch around the bodies and the faces. Yeah, it's an animal puzzle. Okay, I'll help you open it because it might all fall out, okay? So this is a mix and match puzzle I got a while back. Never gave it to him, just stored it away. You know, like the... <laughs> <laughs> is that funny? Yeah. So he can mix and match the animal heads and bodies, and they're like these little wooden shapes. He had so much fun playing with that. I pulled that out to give him a break from watching his iPad and also to utilize the time that we had with the sun still being out where he can still see things. I figured at night it would get dark and he wouldn't be able to do any activities anyways. with that then he ended up playing with that with his cars and turning them into like city blocks and sidewalks breaking them up going crazy this guy did it, did it, did it this is snow. we can have a little bit more media time today but it's okay it wasn't super bad and we were listening to an audiobook uh, while he was doing that with his headphones on and we're just gonna keep going for a little stretch without any music or any like media or noise Joe and I are talking business as we usually do. I think that the last stretch I would have probably changed him into his PJs to make him more comfortable. Maybe invested in some sort of like window shades or clings to make it dark so that it would like prompt him to sleep and take naps more. He made it all the way until we got home, which was really late at night. Uh, we were sidetracked because I was too busy like shopping at the Goodwill outlet, which I'll be talking about and is probably gonna come out next so anyways because of that we were delayed and we didn't make it home until like two in the morning and surprisingly lincoln was up until then so all in all it was a very successful trip there was definitely no meltdowns there wasn't really any whining or when are we gonna get there or like anything like that honestly so i'm sure it has a lot to do with the temperament of your child the fact that if you have one or multiple children and their ages but it definitely did take some research and some planning and some preparation and like breaking up your day like you normally would do, like you kind of have a schedule. So I think that definitely helped to just kind of have that in mind and prepare and plan. So I hope these tips are helpful, that you enjoyed listening to what we did and how we survived our 14 hours there and 14 hours back, staying in uh, three different hotels. So. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to go on a road trip soon and you want to use any of these tips or if you have any awesome tips for the fellow moms out there that you would like to share. Let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, remember to push like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to our channel and push that bell for notifications so that you know when a new video like this comes out next. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.